let's do some news. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is November 4th, 2022. The time is 1,523 hours. PM. <laughs> We're live, baby. Got some news to talk about today. Just so you guys know, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the chapters out on the timeline down here on the YouTubes, okay? So if you don't want to hear about Twitter bullshit, you can just skip past it. I understand some people are tired of hearing about it, but the news affects us all, game creators and people alike. <laughs> I don't see no chapters. Dang it! <laughs> chapters, bitch! I've been putting chapters, except sometimes I forget. I forget to put chapters on. And, it's, and then like later, I'm like, oh man, fuck. Uh, uh, uh. And, I, and, then, and then and that's it. And then I just forget to put it on. So I'm sorry for the times that I forget to put it on. But I promise you, I do make an effort to do it. Um, but then if I don't make the effort, then, you know, it just doesn't happen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I saw that. Like Twitch, Twitch just like, Twitch is disconnected for some reason. We're back there. We're good. We can forgive you. Okay, good. Just grab your marker, right? <laughs> just put a little, a little nick. Okay, that's where that's gonna be, and then oop, that's where that's gonna be. Anyways, 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 anyways. So, Twitter news. It has been. Uh, we'll start off with. Uh, it's been a very, very tumultuous week for for Twitter. It's been a very uh, tumultuous several weeks for Twitter ever since uh, Elon took over. If you're not familiar, Elon bought it forty four billion dollars, um, and everyone's basically been like telling him he's been getting he got fucking duped into it because of his ego and all that shit, and he's never gonna make his money back, and he's all these fucking crazy schemes on how he's gonna do it and everything. It just seems like he has no fucking control over anything. But we'll start off with the layoffs, the expected layoffs. We knew. New, 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 new that uh, there was going to be some layoffs once he walked in the door. Um, and it says employees and Twitter just got an email from their bosses saying layoffs are coming tomorrow, which is today. And they did happen. We're going to talk about that. Uh, those who are, stay are staying will get a note tomorrow in their work email. Those who are let go will get an email sent to their personal address. Slot machine style layoffs. And uh, he laid off Ligma and Johnson. Dang it, we knew it was gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, last night there was, I mean, there was a number of uh, of like trends related to people, like basically the, almost the entirety of Twitter staff um, just sitting at their computers waiting to get logged off. And there was a few people tweets that I saw where people had said that they have, uh, that they're like, were locked, logged out of their remote desktop uh, and then um, and then they and they were kicked out of Slack basically, you know, at the same time. And that's how that's how they basically knew that they were one of the lucky ones, you know. <laughs> it's it's so it's so like dehumanizing, you know. And I understand this happens this happens in other industries too, but not quite like this. Like this is like <sighs> on the scale of thirty seven hundred layoffs. There's so much that clearly like did not happen with like the like how many people, first off, the number 3,700 was kind of floating around is how many people were laid off. And I'm not sure if that's been verified yet, but having all of these people just be like, let go. It, fe it feels like it's the same issue that he had when he bought Twitter, which he did not do any due diligence, right? These are, in a lot of cases, a lot of these folks are like highly intelligent and specialized folks who have specialized jobs at the company that they do. And a lot of that stuff needs to be reviewed because there's a lot of undocumented shit that could just, start piling up one of the running one of the running jokes that i hear is that there's some some engineer somewhere has 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 a little job that he just does just on his own right like he just oh this lot this 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 keeps getting full so i'm just gonna empty out manually flush these this cash every once in a while it's fine as long as i'm here i'll keep on flushing this cash it's totally fine nothing will ever happen as long as i'm here well now that person's not there so <laughs> So there's a lot of potential here for a lot of undocumented shit going just completely unseen uh, until, of course, until something happens or something breaks. And then it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> what happened to this guy taking care of this? Oh, we let him go. Oh, well, <laughs> hire someone to fix this. <laughs> so. So yeah, I see. I see some of you guys already mentioning that he's uh, he's potentially breaking California law. There's a little bit of kind of we will we'll see on that. So this I saw this floating around. This was um, uh, not just with her, but a couple other people saying that uh, in other states as well, not just California, but also New York City or New York State. Um, that uh, there is what's called a warn 
um, law that requires Twitter to give you 60 days notice of, of before a massive layoff. So it's a layoff of 50 plus employees, which this absolutely is. Now there is there is a New York is 90 days. Okay, that's what I heard too. Uh, there is there is I guess kind of a loophole to that in that uh, Elon can give them X number of days of severance, and then that would be that. I don't know if that completely, I don't know if that is true or whatever. That's just kind of what I've been reading everywhere is that could be it. Um, all, but you know, it could just be like, maybe, maybe he just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> so much stuff is happening that I seriously had to entertain the idea that there's no logic here. There's no research or like, hmm, right? He just doesn't give a shit. He's just, yeah, just get rid of them. We'll deal with this. Lord, let the lawyers take care of it. And that's it. Like, that could just be the way that he operates. He's going to do that. Um, Twitter's California base. Yep. Uh, it seems to be a lot of YOLO. Yeah. Lots. Lots. So, uh, uh, Yo -Yo Yoel, who is the, uh, I'll read this actual uh, thing here because uh, head of safety and integrity. That's what it was. Head of safety and integrity at Twitter. So, uh, Yoel is the one who is, uh, he's kind of the ire of a lot of like people who like to spew hate online on Twitter, uh, because he's the one that basically tells them, no, you can't do that. Uh, so this is, this is uh, related to last week. We talked about all the slurs and everything that were popping up all over the place. Just, so just out of nowhere it was so weird <laughs> it was so weird just people just start dropping in word all over the place and so he says since saturday we've been focused on addressing the surge of hateful conduct on twitter we've made measurable progress moving more than 1500 accounts reducing impressions on uh this content to nearly zero and so he goes over in detail talking about how the how a lot of this content came from uh from a small a smallish group of people that um uh, were repeat bad actors and so that's what we're seeing a lot of it. There's still some that exist. You could just go and search certain words and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, but, you know, they're, they are trying to communicate. This is this person's you know, obviously original uh, Twitter. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, this is new. Actually, I have, part of me wanted to check to see if he still had a job. <laughs> What's his banner? Uh, <laughs> Fucking sick. Uh, here are the facts about where Twitter's trust and safety moderation capacity stands today. While we said goodbye to incredibly talented friends and colleagues yesterday, our core moderation capabilities remain in place. Yesterday's reduction in force affected approximately 50% of our trust and safety organization as opposed to approximately 50% cuts company-wide. Okay, so this is just more confirmation that it is 50%, which is about 3,500 to 3,700 people. Um, all right, so they they did, let me see. So they did, so they are, they did let go of, of some of that staff, but, but they did leave some on, which, which I mean, you know, given what we saw last week, I feel like they kind of need these guys to be kind of weird. Let them go. Uh, but Elon's really working against that. Like he's doing everything he can to kind of be like on the opposite side of that party, his own fucking people, like trying to like clean shit up. And he's just like, well, hold on a second though. Advertisers should support what freedom of speech, freedom of speech or political correctness. Fucking super loaded, super fucking loaded. Fuck. <laughs> And so and like, I think Pocket Pocket pretty much nails this, right? Freedom of, freedom of speech, but in its current correct, but in its correct usage, not what it has become on the internet in the in the wake of anti-wokeness. And I mean, it's clear that that's what he's going for with the whole correctness. I mean, he, you could just replace political, you just replace uh, correctness with wokeness and it would have been exactly what he meant to say. Um, his, yeah, his follower race is definitely not biased. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't support freedom of speech, right? as a baseline yeah freedom of speech should be able to say what you want in general but i mean there's consequences of that shit you know it's kind of you, you got something, something something's gonna happen um so you guys probably heard he's trying to uh uh he's 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 trying everything he can to like make the company look like shit but he uh he, there was a leak or there was a uh, um, um article that came out that said that he was going to be charging twenty dollars a month to use uh, uh uh to get verified on twitter and also get uh, and the blue check and then also keep uh, or get a whole bunch of other like perks um and like one of them was like 50 percent less ads and i was like oh my god 50 percent less ads like what a fucking joke <laughs> not even the whole fucking thing dude oh, i guess you gotta track our shit somehow um <laughs> 50 percent ads uh so yeah he said 20 bucks and you know, a lot of people are that it was spreading like crazy, and I was I was very hesitant to jump on that because we're like right now everybody's in like high alert mode, right? When Elon does something with Twitter, because a lot of us basically live on Twitter, our our businesses are built around social media, and to lose an arm of that social of that support 
is like, I mean, that's troubling for all of us, right? That's why we're all kind of on edge, but we shouldn't jump at every little thing. So when the $20 thing came out, he didn't say anything to like argue against it. In most cases, he's more than happy to respond to incorrect headlines to say that is incorrect, that is whatever. Uh, whether or not it's incorrect or not remains to be seen because motherfucker has, you know, try to be try to be slick and, and uh, I don't say lie, but definitely uh, being a little facetious with certain things. Um, pay $20 for the for the 100%. <laughs> so Stephen King, author, popular author, <laughs> so I, Stephen King says uh, uh, $20 a month to keep my blue check fuck that they should pay me if that gets instituted instituted, I'm gone like Enron and he says and Elon replies and he says we need to pay the bill somehow Twitter cannot rely entirely on advertisers how about $8 <laughs> Jesus Christ and he says I will explain the rationale in longer form for this implemented is the only way to defeat trolls and bots, whatever, which is okay, whatever. Um <laughs> Best I could do is tree fitty. I mean he took he took a revenue stream that was leaked that he clearly wanted to happen because he's acknowledging its existence, and then he cut it down to eight dollars. Now someone out there is gonna be like, no man, he's playing 4D chess. It was originally gonna be eight dollars, but he leaked twenty dollars, and that way he could bring it down. Over over promise, own undercompensate, over deliver. And whatever. Yeah, it's the fuck up. <laughs> this is the bargaining phase of Twitter's death. Yeah, they're right here. The actual Twitter man bargaining. So uh, he's not the only person. Uh, Stephen King's not the only person that he uh, pushed his uh, $8 thing into. He was uh, also um, uh, AOC, Alexand Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez. Fuck. Uh -huh. She says, uh, uh, laugh my ass off at a billionaire earnestly trying to sell people on the idea that free speech is actually $8 a month subscription plan. And he says, your feedback is appreciated. Now pay $8. <laughs> like, from an average troll, right? It's like, it's pretty fucking funny, right? But it's fucking, this is a guy who like owns Twitter now, right? Like, the site's survival is is actually hinging on what he says and does. And this motherfucker is hitting up one of the most popular fucking authors for $8. He's being a fucking dick to a fucking elected, elected uh, a, a politician. Like, come on, man. Like, he's really not showing that he has the restraint that he talks about in his initial, like, advertisers. Please don't leave. <laughs> Free speech. Yeah, exactly. So somebody mathed his, uh, um, somebody, I saw this on Reddit too. Somebody mathed this. Uh, it says, uh, if every current verified user, 423,810 as of this writing, were to pay for that every month at 0.002% of the purchase price of the company uh, would be made back every year from subscriptions. So it would take something like thousands of years to make that money up that he, uh, uh, that he lost. <laughs> if you were to get every current verified user to pay. And I think it was a 20 bucks though. Yeah, it was a 20, yeah, it was a 20 bucks. So it's even, <laughs> that was math based on the 20 bucks. So it's even less than that. <laughs> Fucking hell. So yeah, it, it's it's the whole like, his whole argument of like, we got to make money somehow is like complete bullshit. Uh, yeah, so some people will pay to get verified. Yeah, so, okay, okay. If even, apparently even if they have like 10 times this number, it's still not going to put a dent in this. Keep in mind, this is no longer 0.002%. It's point zero 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 eight, <laughs> which is stupid in itself. Yeah, a lot of people are like eight dollars ain't much. Yeah, but not that many though. Not ten times this number. That's what I'm trying to say here. I'm not gonna go four million people signing up for this. This is just super not gonna happen. Um, so yeah, they're just um, that math that doesn't check out for me. Maybe 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 my math is bad. I'm not sure. Or maybe this person's math is bad, and I just shouldn't trust people on the internet. <sighs> but there are other there are other rumors about features that are coming. I spent four dollars subbing your ass. Yeah, but come on, man, I'll bring the good content. Come on, my memes are are, are, are cheery and funny. <laughs> my shenanigans are fun. <laughs> so, uh, 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 some of the one of the features that um, uh, were discussed here is that Twitter is working on a feature to allow people to post videos and then charge users to view them with adult content as a possibility. They call this they call this high risk. 
right? It was something that, as he says, it will compete with, uh, resemble the OnlyFans model of lock content that users can pay to see. Uh, we, we already have adult content all over Twitter, right? Like it's kind of like the last bastion social media site where you could have almost whatever you want. Tumblr's gone, Instagram's done, Facebook, no way. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like one of the last places that you could just openly share you know, any kind of adult content that you want and not really have to worry about too many repercussions. There's stuff. Tumblr is back, but no, but no, but no, no, but it's dead. It's dead. They went past, they went past the point of no return when they said no more porn and everyone's like, fuck it. <laughs> but yeah, Tumblr is back, but it's nowhere near and it will never ever reach this level, uh, their previous level of popularity again. Those people are all too old. They don't give a shit. They're moving on to Mastodon. I don't know what they're calling. <laughs> so uh, what I think is funny about this particular headline is that uh, we've already seen this happen with OnlyFans, where Visa basically stepped in and said, hey, we don't want to support uh, adult content <laughs> because we have a lot of Christian backers. <laughs> <laughs> and so there is just fucking crusade against Twi against OnlyFans that almost fucking drove everybody away from it. Absolute same thing would happen here. Who is it gonna get? I mean, unless unless he doesn't plan on going through a typical credit card processor and instead says, "Hey, you could just use Doge to buy all your porn from now on." In which case, it might fucking work. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that, well, that one might actually work. That one might actually work. Um. Uh, so yeah, this is like kind of a big red flag. Advertisers don't necessarily want to be on a site that has porn content readily available, right? Which on Twitter, it's kind of technically not. Uh, they almost certainly don't want to be on a site that allows people to pay for porn. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Um, he'll just use PayPal. Was that? Remember, PayPal hates Elon probably now, huh? Uh, now, if you missed it, just to add to the pile of shit that he's doing here, right? Uh, if you missed it, one of the first things he did was he replied to Hillary Clinton, who uh, was talking about Paul Pelosi, the husband of, uh, of of Nancy Pelosi, who is one of the one of the mo most senior, you know, tenure, all that shit members of uh, of, of our government. Um, he was attacked, all this stuff, uh, and then he he replies to Hillary Clinton's tweet saying that, you know, that people who are sharing the or who are spreading these lies that that, you know, that whatever occurred on that night. And then he chimes in with a fucking smob observed SM observed, which is a uh, um, uh, was a Santa Monica observed something like that, which is basically like a National Enquirer type magazine. So, like, I mean, he's basically sharing like fake news, like and I tweeted about this too. I was like, this is like from the top, man. Like, I could not believe that he fucking said this to Hillary Clinton of all fucking people. Of all fucking people. Like, <laughs> like whether, whether or not you like Hillary Clinton, right? Like, you cannot deny that she is one of the all-time most popular politicians that we have here in the States, right? Uh, again, free speech, yeah. Um, <clears throat> what will it be paying if, uh, if, uh, if, 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 hold on, let me see see what we pay. oh i can't go through this right now but um but yeah it, it, it's supposed to be like months worth right you guys have popular politicians popular is relative oh yeah for sure i mean i'm just saying like when you say when you're somebody who is in a position that elon is and you have a, like a public communication that is um uh in contrary to whatever they're saying on in a public forum then it's going to be known. It's not like he was replying to like me, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like he's replying to me. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, I'm sure people would have seen it, but I mean, who cares if it's, if he's giving it to me, you know? <laughs> yes. He shouldn't have shared it, but he also, he said the fucking Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, no, sure. More well known. There we go. <laughs> uh, up to a max of 60 days or one half the number of days the employee was employed by, by the employer whichever period is smaller at the highest rate of pay in the last three years and also yeah and also health benefits I read that part too uh, also health benefits so so today Elon's like I don't understand Twitter has had a massive drop in revenue due to activist groups pressuring advertisers. <laughs> Even though nothing has changed with the content moderation and we did everything we could to appease the activists. Extremely messed up. They're trying to destroy free speech in America. They are? <laughs> what the fuck is they? 
Elon. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so uh, Hank Green, Hank Green replies, this is another Twitter user exercising his free speech, says you tweeted a conspiracy theory from a website less credible than the National Enquirer like four days ago. We all need to look inward as well as outward. And he says, and therefore Twitter should just die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh here we go what did he say this is i didn't see this one yet of course it's not it's just it's just too simple to attribute this to activists when advertisers who have lots of incentives to be cautious are given reasons to be cautious you wield a lot of power and in my opinion it would be very good for twitter for you to do it more thoughtfully he's trying really hard here he's trying you and i could both get pretty fucking snarky on twitter but let's try to stay curious about other people who criticize us sometimes they're just being shits so it's tough but only seeking out people but da, 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 da. uh he still has hope yeah you could tell he still has hope yeah it's 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 a waste <laughs> bless his heart <laughs> what's funny is uh the oh where is it at is it only on mobile so there's like a fact check doid type uh, uh a little applet or a little a uh, connector to a tweet let me see if i could pull it up here on mobile and then show you on the uh on the old camera here uh it's elon musk and what's happening is it's let me see uh um no no no, no master of revenue oh is it gone oh it's gone <laughs> So th there used to be on some of his tweets, uh, there used to be uh, a little kind of a um, almost like an explanation or whatever voted on by the uh, by the users, by people who are, uh, who comment or whatever. And it's funny seeing that those little like, you know, in this tweet, this discuss blah, 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 blah. And it's totally like kind of putting him in his place. Anyways, I wish I could find an example, but apparently that feature conveniently disappeared for me. Hmm. Um, I kind of hope that something good rises from the ashes of Twitter and billions he spent on it. He probably got got it blocked like how Elon isn't uh, under the uh, trending page. Yeah, I know. I I, I really kind of there's certain cases where it's like, I wonder if he's doing this. If one if he's doing this, call up. I don't give a fuck. Just take me off trending. You know, <laughs> you can send me a screenshot, my man. Yeah, send it. Send it. I'll post it right now. Yeah, please, please, please. Uh, mass is exploding, to be honest. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they have tons of people like moving over. I have noticed on the official Twitter app, the amount of ads I get quadrupled when I would see one or two per scroll. I see ad every four or so tweets. My favorite is when I refresh the feed and the top is a an ad. That's my, I love that one. That's my absolute favorite. <laughs> We're starting to tweet showing up in people's notifications that I don't follow him. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, so while we wait for that, for that to come through, um, let me go ahead and show, uh, uh, let me see. Well, actually, no, wait, hold on a second. Here we go. He got it. He got it. My man, my man. Yeah, okay. Oh, I got it. really was there. I thought maybe I had the wrong tweet. So, yeah, it really was there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Furious. You're the best. Uh, so, yeah, here it is. Uh, dropping revenue. And it says, readers added context. They thought people might want to know. Reporting shows advertisers suspending or canceling ad buys over concerns with Twitter platform direction, especially as related to content moderation. <laughs> yeah, this this was there. <laughs> maybe, maybe some of you guys see it, some of you guys don't. But uh, I don't see it anymore. And, you know. I don't know. Occam's razor, I guess. <laughs> but there are, I mean, there are other things that, you know, Elon's got a big hole to dig himself out of a $44 billion hole. Uh, and so we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of kind of like, uh, kind of different ways that he's, he's trying to go through to, uh, um, uh, you know, try to raise some funds. And so there's this, here's this new thing here. I don't know if you guys have seen this. This is, uh, uh, uh Elon code review. So you can actually print your code for review and send it to, uh, uh and send an Elon Musk will actually like, uh, you know, take a look at it for you. Uh, yeah, six months free. You can print it today. There's some, just some testimonies here. So you stick me forever to get my code review since Friday. I've been printing it all out and getting Elon to look at it. And my God, it's been amazing. Uh, I said, I lulled when I went asked to print out my code, but for real, this works. This is really my jam. Printouts, faxes, and handwritten code reviews retro, but unmistakably the future. The service is pretty reasonable in price. Uh, they have a $15 billion starter, or you could go straight to the $44 billion uh, plan, which he would greatly appreciate right now. Uh, ElonCodeReview.com. Uh, you could go and check it out if you like. Uh, there's, a, there's a handy video here if you want to watch that. Uh, it pops right up. <laughs> you guys knew that was fake from the beginning, right? <laughs> Printed code, come on. <laughs> now I can finally get my code review. Look at that. <laughs> 
guess I'll sell it for the fifteen billion dollar one. <laughs> so, <clears throat> how is uh, how is this tying into gaming? Like, obviously, having you know um, a lot of strife in your in your workplace, really, especially if you're someone that works on Twitter. Um, so, uh, Nibel, is it Nibel? Nibilius, Nibel, who is a game news uh, account, like Twitter account, like review, all that stuff, uh, actually said that he was leaving Twitter. Now, uh, he says, <clears throat> there's actually a, a couple of notes here that he left. He says here in his uh, in his farewell tweet, um, he says, after some introspection, I've made the decision to focus my time and energy elsewhere and move on from Twitter. Uh, this marks the end of my video games coverage and my active participation uh, in this platform. Thanks, everyone, for the fun times. Um, and so... Uh, coming down a little bit further, I actually have another, I have another tweet here. Uh, let me see, maybe they grabbed it here. He's voiced his, yeah, okay, no, it's gone. Uh, in his farewell uh, uh, message, which I think he put it in his Discord, and someone grabbed a screenshot of it, he he also notes that he is his, uh, that the, the uncertainty in the platform is also a driving measure to get him out off, and basically have him, uh, he wants to move on and do other stuff, and whatever but what i found is and this is why this is why i'm bringing this up because i want you guys to be vigilant of this is that you know people leaving for x reason x sometimes want to blame it on y when that wasn't really the problem right so <clears throat> his issue is that a couple months ago i guess he had a uh, professional life change he decided he was going to try to go all in patreon all that stuff and try to create uh you know a persona that is funded crowdfunded and he's able to do it that way but even though he had support from like Jeff Keighley and other like, you know, known game uh, the, um, industry folks uh, and him, him himself also having almost 500,000 followers, uh, he, he says um, he still couldn't get uh, he still couldn't get uh, um, any uh, traction, enough traction in order to keep that thing, you know, basically keep it profitable enough for him to want to stay with it. Now, I don't know how much money he was looking for, how much he was making, what he considered to not be enough or what he was doing professionally. I mean, if he was just doing fun shit with gaming and stuff like that and his part time because he's working at home and he only had a, he had a job able to check in like 10 hours a week or something like that. And that and that job paid a fuck ton of money. Right. Like maybe. Yeah. But you're not going to have that kind of money from crowdfunding. You got you. I mean, you're basically on an artist salary when you're crowdfunding shit. Uh, see, there's also this that gave a panic a heart attack. Oh, no, no. Yeah, I saw that, too. Um, <laughs> uh, so this was so Nibel is just one person who's leaving around this time. There was also a uh, ghost crawler. Ghost crawler also said that he was going to be. Uh, leaving and then he came back I guess and he says geez since I can't take a break from Twitter without it becoming some political deal here's how I view things I'm not here for free speech I don't think the US government cares much about what I have to say what I what I do care about is consequences for speech I can say anything you can't do anything about it doesn't end well for game developers been there if this doesn't come become a free-for-all hellscape then wonderful I like Twitter I want to stay but I don't want to be back I want to go I don't want to go back to the realm of insults stalking and death threats if that free speech is important to you well that's weird but you do you i'll find somewhere else and then he talks about his dog or something um so yeah i mean like i guess i guess gc also said that he was probably gonna leave and then he ended up coming back um but yeah you're just gonna you're gonna see there's some folks are gonna be like you know oh, i'm gonna bounce for a little bit try to other things mastodon or whatever um and i think that's great i mean i think that exploring other options whatever makes you feel better i mean like don't let twitter be the one to bring you down you know let me let me do that one let me do that for you let me let me do the Twitter digging and I'll show you guys all the shit that's going down. All right. I'll do it for you. I'll suffer. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> go. Yeah. Go like my mass on our posts and shit. I think you're off the uh, I think you're off the mute, the mute roster now. So you're, you better watch what you post. <laughs> um, speaking of World of Warcraft, we got some good. We got some good, good stories coming up, guys. Uh, there is a Warcraft story that they're working on here. Um, do, 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 do. See, I saw a post the other day saying we only have a few decades left on this earth before climate change is through, so let's not spend it on Twitter. <laughs> Top mass on pictures we're checking out. Hmm? So, Warcraft story. Uh, basically, it is a service, or it is a bot service that will take your, uh, your character's name, your realm, and your region, and it will turn it into a a cute little like little card, little lore card, right? Little RP lore card. 
it was it was cute yeah I, i'm gonna yeah absolutely i did it too uh i did it too i i did um yeah, you can see all these different stories all these people i don't know how it parses the data where it pulls it from it was mine was kind of weird i did it with darnell um just to see what it would say and it says a warcraft story for the history books and it says grunts Darnell <laughs> is a battle-worn veteran who once racked up 281 arena and battleground victories and gave 9,936 foes an honorable death. I'm a little upset about that. I didn't realize that I was so short of 10K. However, they're rarely one, they're rarely one to show emotions, having only been laughed, heard, heard laughing 16 times with their friends. I don't understand that shit at all. I don't know where they pull that from. <laughs> Darnell, this character, I've actually, this is the, this, when I live recorded Blizz Blues, like all 60 something episodes of it, like pretty much on live servers. And I'm, I, I had macros for every fucking emote. And so when you see him talking, he's kind of going like this. He's just cutting through emotes. <laughs> There's no way I'm 16. <laughs> There's no way I'm only 16. I don't, know, so I don't know where they're getting that info from, but you know what? I mean, I appreciate it. It's still cute. I think it's, yeah, it is. I think that's the right word for it. It's a cute little thing they did. Like someone came up with this idea and, and, uh, and they rolled with it. And you know what? I think this is a good one. This actually, this actually made me like, Ooh, just, just a few more kills. <laughs> it was a track early on. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I know that some of the stats, like for example, the HKs, like yeah, HKs, uh, that's something that they've been tracking forever. But yeah, maybe they weren't logging the uh, the, the the emote usage or and all that stuff. Um, but still, it's still, oh, the itch, I know. A lot of the old data was ever recorded like it is now, exactly. She was in Wrath. Oh, that's right, she was in Wrath. Wrath really changed a lot of stuff. And I would say that I did a lot of recordings in Kata too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Weird. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's still, I mean, it's still a cool service. I'm not going to down it for not being like absolutely perfect. There's a ton of examples in uh, comments here. Um, this guy who looks like Jesse Cox kind of. Uh, this is this Breaker Chains. Fearlessly defeated Sire Denathrius 30 times in Castle Nathria, making all their 674 and heroic and mythic boss kills look easy. <clears throat> you loved yours? Nice. Say the whole word. Don't just say Kata. No. What? Don't tell me what to do. Shit. See, 7,162 foes. Oh, see, Darnell got more than that. 13,000. Man, I should do one more for my, uh, for my, for my row. Oh, man, I should do one more for my, let me see. Hold on a second. Mm, I think it's the same info. And then I'll change this to, what is it? Uh, uh what is a phony? There you go. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> I think that'll work. I'm curious. I'm curious what the story will be for that one. Better have like a billion, a billion HKs. Uh, does it doesn't work if you haven't played in years. The HKs will work, and some of the other achievements will work as well. Yes. Yeah, but as as we've already kind of parsed, like there's definitely like some things that don't get counted that weren't counted from the beginning and all that. Um Oh, cataclysm, motherfucker. <laughs> cataclysm. Oh, I already get it. Let's see what it says. Your story is told. High Warlord Phony is a battle-worn veteran who once racked up 470 arena battleground victories and gave 16,890 foes an honorable death. Often let down by their party, they've been driven to facepalm four times. Yeah, well, that's, what's, what's up with my shoulders? They didn't, I swear I had that. I swear I had that done. Anyways, uh, uh, that was really fast. Yeah, they're pretty quick with that. They're pretty quick with that. What's this link? Uh, um, oh, is this yours? Let's see, uh, 457 companions. Yeah, so they're even parsing information on like pets and all that. Um, wait, companions, pets? Yeah, pet companions. Uh, and the last lane tri triumphed 25 pet battles across Azeroth. Wow, only 25? Is that actual render of your character? So far, yes. Yeah, uh, that said, they find themselves at the top of Dead's list after causing 16,750 critter deaths. <gasps> That's you, yeah. Do how wait, are you, are you just like playing pet? Like pet battles constantly. <laughs> that's what this. That's what this reads like. <laughs> just constantly doing pet battles, just wrecking all those cute little things. <laughs> Druids for the ethical and humane treatment of animals. Thank you, talk. Thank you. <laughs> that's what they're. That's their PETA, basically. Um, exactly. Yeah, let's move on PETA. So there is. Uh, 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 speaking of. Speaking of battles, so a um, 
This is this is a Japanese translated article about a French man who uh, built a really fucking dope 3D system for uh, his duels in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and you could see an example here. It's kind of a single image ex example. You could see how the, 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 the images pop up. Uh, I actually have... So, so I'll just talk over his explanation because his explanation is in... Uh, is, is is in French, so that's probably like none of you. Uh, but he does have he does have lower thirds here, but just to give you guys a um, <clears throat> so he has an automatic system that will uh, follow when he puts cards down, so it'll trigger an overhead cam, and then he puts the cards on. You could see that there's like three D models that pop up from it and now that he's ready to battle once he places his card back and on the on the deck on the side that triggers the change in cam to the side cam right it's fucking amazing fucking amazing uh hold on a second let me take care of this um yeah just like really fucking cool and the whole thing is set up so that he can just sit there and play and the camera will automatically change and, and into like what you know to what angle he needs for whatever uh it, augmented reality or in cam overlay it's aug augmented reality he's using um um yeah yeah yeah. Augmented. so basically everything is done in like obs some overlay that he built or whatever anyways it's a dope project yeah he could trigger he uses the uh his uh, steam deck to trigger like attacks and all that stuff for uh for the animations and all that. That's a really cool fucking system. Like a really, really cool system that you normally, or I guess pre, pre, prior to this, you'd only see like companies develop for like some kind of like promotion, you know, like point your camera at the table and the fucking Noid will get out and do a little dance for you or whatever. <clears throat> so, so yeah, just fucking cool shit. Really cool. Uh, and, and for it to be seen live, I mean, that's pretty dope. Oh, he's got a foot pedal too. Oh shit. You had to know that. That's pretty great. So all you need is like a lot of cameras and a lot of technical know-how. And you guys got this. <laughs> Can you do a little dance again? Oh, it was a one-time thing. One-time thing. Um, uh, Star Wars Battle Chess. <laughs> Easy game. Yeah, no, it's pretty fucking dope. The USB foot pedals for life. Yeah. I found a, there's been a few instances where I feel like I need one. I actually have, I actually have under my desk a, um, a it's a drum throne. But without the uh, the base, you know, I mean, I just I just took it off because I use this. I use this as my foot. I kind of I don't know. I just kind of put my feet on it. It's oh, my feet are always on this fucking thing. And it's kind of wrecked the carpet underneath. But uh, yeah, maybe I should like swap it out with some USB pedals or something like that. Because yeah, my feet's always on some shit. I could just sit on the computer like this. <laughs> I know someone use a foot pedal for push talk and voice chat. Oh, there you go. Um, <clears throat> Wait, what is ADHD distraction thing so he can focus? What? No. Um. Anyways, so dope tech. Speaking of, mm, nope. Is he actually sitting on the rest of the chair? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh. Anyways, <clears throat> speaking of dope tech, Doctor Disrespect. Doctor Disrespect is ha or has announced. An, an AI voice emulator. Now, he's not the only one to do this. Listen up. Listen, listen, listen. Game changing. Care to comment on this clip of you playing it? Am I going to die if I jump right here? So you're going to hear... Where are you going? Right on the the AI voice no! commenting on his, his voice. Come on, champ. You're looking like Timmy Tenders out there. This video is very weirdly chopped together, but basically he's using Bonfire TV. This is some, some service they're launching. I've seen this. We've seen this on other sites already, like other sites who've kind of had a system like this. But this is the first time I've seen, you know, an actual like big, 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 well-known person <laughs> in the industry. Talk shit to me while I DJ. Yeah, there you go. Initially, I was like, oh, this is this is kind of lame because because it was Doc's voice. And I was like, no one wants Doc's voice. I mean, duh, of course, this could be your voice. But uh, hmm, like, oh, man, it's weird. But part of me is kind of like that could be kind of interesting in the future. Then I could just like, you know, not have to stream anymore. I'll just have my voice do the rest. Uh, number one toilet streamer. Will the AI screen speed, violence, momentum? That would be awesome. I mean, there was some pretty cool stuff, but there, we need more, more, um, uh, more, what's it called? 
I guess just more examples of it. Just just having Doc's voice is not quite enough because we don't know how much input it needs in order to create that. And and I, I can't remember the name of the, the previous um, uh, tool that we had uh, reviewed or we looked at that the way that they do this voice masking or whatever, but uh, it does require a lot of data. Deepfakes for voices have been available for a while. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Was it Lairbird? I'm not sure. Lairbird. Clippy comeback. We need Darnell commenting on your gameplay. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking, actually. I was thinking Darnell. That'd be a pretty funny one. <laughs> Not for, like, corny shit like this. What is this ad? Not for, like, corny, like, commentary or whatever, but, you know, I don't know, some other service. I have no idea. I mean, I did, I did, you know, make the uh, Darnellify uh, add-on that basically added a bunch of clips of Darnell saying random things to, uh, in your UI in uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, but and people loved that so why wouldn't they love something like this you know for like their favorite characters i know a lot of you guys have a whole bunch of vtuber waifus that you would absolutely spend money on some kind of clippy <laughs> some kind of waifu clippy version of that voice absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Some sort of desktop companion. Hmm. Code Mikos will still be will still be next gen. Yeah. Well, it's the it's not so much the avatar itself. It's the uh, it's the voice that it's able to uh, you know to 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 uh, I guess to the voice. I don't know. It's it's not really a it's, it's an AI doing it. The sound is able to make. There you go. Synthesize. Thank you. Synthesize. Simulate. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's excellent. <laughs> no other features for the voice? Nah, nah. Um, <laughs> uh, let me see. Oh, let's see. Further, further into the. Oh yeah, here we go. This was kind of a weird one. This was kind of a weird, not weird, interesting kind of one. So there's this applet called uh, an extension called Odyssey. It comes with a little video here. It's supposed to be a like a way for you to have a social i guess like uh kind of a massive online presence while watching content watch the video we'll, we'll comment Wake on up. this navigator it seems the fragmentation of the singularity has caused you to forget me i am lux i just booted up my overlay to help you remember my extension allows for interactive multiplayer experiences on any website across the internet. While exploring, you will connect, compete. As you can see, it's all it's all in the browser. It's extension. When you tire on your journeys, you can relax and recharge alongside the friends you make. As you explore, you will earn credits, which you can use to purchase unique cosmetic items and skins. I hope to see you soon, Navigator. Your Odyssey awaits. What was it called? What was it called? About the uh, the one that was very old Firefox, because people are mentioning that it is very similar to another thing that existed at some point. But this one, this one is really hitting the uh, it's really hitting the zoomers, man. Um, <laughs> like I went to uh, see, I use it as a lot of front. Another way to track people. Another way to track people. I know. I went to uh, his original TikTok here to see he made a little video about it. Um, Do you easily get bored watching YouTube videos and Twitch streams? If so, I built a Chrome extension. I, I love, I love this. Do you get bored watching YouTube videos and Twitch streams? <laughs> extension for you. At any video or URL you go to, you, all you have to do is click this little Odyssey icon in the bottom corner, and now you can watch your video while being in a multiplayer planet that's instantly created. Oh, what's up, dude? You can play parkour, or you can fit. Yes, but all these mini games and shit you could do. It's so fucking. It's it's like it's it's interesting, but at the same time, I'm like. I'm like, wow, man, like, why don't, you, why don't you just watch the video? But then I read the comments, right? And the comments are so, I don't understand what to make of the comments. Zoomer bait, right? It's got to be Zoomer bait. It's like finally something to keep me engaged. What a concept. Uh, this is, I uh, see, the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. <laughs> I love never thinking. I love being stimulated. I love being stimulated. If you get bored while watching literal long-form entertainment, take a break from this app. <laughs> I love destroying my attention span. <laughs> like some of this, it's like it's like I I I want to say why, but like some people are like this is this is what I want. I love stimulation. I love stimulus. I want to be stimulated at all times. Um, 
I mean, some of these are being facetious. Like, let's not let's be real, but still, like, I mean, this is why we have issues with tech corporations. Um, I'm gonna go with a big fat why. I literally do so much other stuff. I listen to videos. I just I can't just watch something. I love watching twenty to forty minute YouTube videos. I, just, I, I absolutely despise TikTok and YouTube Shorts. So yeah, this is this is probably not something for you guys then. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be something for you guys, but but again, you know, it's not it's not not really for me either. But I was genuinely intrigued by just the overall responses, like where that were like, yeah, this is great, this is cool, you know, um, <laughs> like people really needed this. I guess they really needed something to keep their attention while they're watching something um <clears throat> do you work on spreadsheets while i have you on the background jen probably go with this because jen's always on her phone every time i try to watch anything um <laughs> watch this be like a level up watching youtube videos double xp during ads Ooh, you make fun of my friends every time they send me a tiktok video hey you... listen i understand tiktok is chinese spyware yes it's true um but there's still some funny videos on there yeah, it's still some funny videos on there. <laughs> Click here to watch five times more ad for triple XP. <sighs> Speaking of ads, you guys watch NASCAR? Any of you guys watch NASCAR? Boy, NASCAR had a pretty interesting moment uh, 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 this past weekend. Nope, ad car. When you were a kiddo, so check this out. So this is the, uh, this is, the uh the last race or the last lap of a race nascar race okay where um uh chastain ross chastain goes from 10th place to fifth place uh in the last lap and the way he does it here we go chastain elliot bell and logano are gonna fight for a championship in phoenix take a look at what he did i have never seen anything like that before in my life Chastain, Motherfucker, Elliot like, <laughs> this is posted five million times to the Trackmania subreddit. <laughs> That's what everyone was saying. This is some video game shit. <laughs> There's, uh, wait, I got another one here. The same fucking thing. Uh, here we go. Yeah, you guys get the get the whole thing here. Oh my gosh, coming to the Yeah, he's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so from 10th to 5th, which actually kept him in the championship uh, running. So it was kind of like a smart move. Obviously, you don't normally do this because it causes extreme damage to the vehicle um, and to the wall. But, uh, yeah, and his poster, he, he did say they did something GameCube on NASCAR 2005 or something. Yeah, I thought it was something like that, like NASCAR or whatever, uh, that he had accredited to. He basically said that, yeah, video games taught me this. <laughs> Speed run strats IRL. <laughs> uh, I do this years ago. I'm a fucking dumbass. This guy doesn't. He's a genius. Well, I mean, <laughs> you can't do this all the time. <laughs> I'm easy to draw a caution flag and he's lucky that he didn't because then he would have been put in whatever place he was at the time But you know you act fast man. Yeah, so there's technically no yeah, that's right There's technically no rule against doing it, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was something Kind of an addendum to an existing rule that already is in place like you can't uh, what what I think I was it uh, you can't gain a uh, placement while riding a wall basically <laughs> on the last lap <laughs> Really easy to implement, man. Simple rule. Anyways, yeah, that was just fucking hilarious. Um, uh, uh, there are some, some of you guys, very excited probably about this next update, this next, uh, this next news piece. New rule, no wall slinging. I know it's also apparently would only work that one track because it's so small, so averages are way lower than elsewhere. It was definitely something you wouldn't uh, want to do on a bigger track. Yeah. <laughs> we have that rule here in Dirt Speedway. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, most games, too, we don't like when people do that. Because you can't, and a lot of times you can't anyways. You ride the wall and you get caught. That's the first thing I thought when I saw that. I was like, oh, my God, I'm just, I'm waiting for him to get stuck on some geometry or something like that. And then the car just, like, exploding in a million pieces. But uh, <clears throat> you drive backwards, you join NASCAR. I bet you would. <laughs> geometry. <laughs> 
Writing the wall will be, uh, yeah, in every racing game, writing the wall will be a new achievement. Yep. Gain, gaining placement while writing a wall. They call it the Chastain or something like that. Gain like five placements. I right, more polygons. Just a few. Just a few. All right, so. Dwarf Fortress has a 1.0 announcement. They're uh, releasing. Um, it's been a long time coming. December 6th. They have a tell hell yeah about fucking time. I've never played it. Yeah, it's a game that it's a game that I've watched other people play like blinds. I watch blind IRL. I watched him play it. Uh, dude's like super into it. Um, <clears throat> and now they finally have a, a 1.0 or a release date. There are some features that are going to be missing though. Like there's an adventure mode. There's all a bunch of other modes that are like, they're not in yet, but they didn't want to, um, they didn't want to postpone the actual date and get it out. Uh, and the video, video does a pretty good job of summarizing what it used to look like here. You could see, I mean, you've probably seen this game or games like it. it's very old concept. And then now the new lots of graphics and everything for everything. I mean, this looks, it looks great. It actually makes me want to play it. <laughs> But 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 I know I know that it's like one of those games that once you get involved, you're basically stuck there forever, like uh, RimWorld or something, or Factorio or whatever. But uh, yeah, Dwarf Fortress getting 1.0, not complete. Sounds about right for a current day. Yeah, <laughs> that's about right. That's about right. Um, lastly, 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 right? Lastly, yeah. Well, lastly, we did good. We did good today. Did we go over an hour? Son of a bitch! Oh no no no, we didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, a tweet that's causing a little bit of confusion. Uh, Christopher Lloyd, known for his role as Uncle Fester in Adam's Family, amongst other things, posted a picture of him with Michael J. Fox, actor known for Teen Wolf. And it says, Time. Hmm. Hmm. A tweet that confuses that is Elon Musk. Yes. I don't know exactly what this means. Could just mean nothing. It could just be friends. But might have something Back to the Future related coming up. Personally, I'd be okay with them just leaving it alone. The little cameos we've gotten all all the you know, whatever like that stuff is fine. Who's it Rick and Morty? What? I'm okay with them leaving it alone. Be done with it. We respect the trilogy. Respect the artists. Respect the art. Leave it alone, please. But at the same time, man, it's like, what are they gonna do? It's probably gonna be like a Christmas special or something like that. Some kind of another cameo thing. Just leave it alone. Maybe, maybe, maybe Christopher Lord was, was being uh, just, uh, you know, just reminiscent of old times or whatever. Got a picture with his buddy. You know, if they remake or make a sequel to Back to the Future, burn Hollywood to the fucking ground. Oh man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Miss, that's right. Miss, just you just watched it. I love it. Yeah, Back to the Future, you just watched the movies. <laughs> yeah, Michael J. Fox did say that he uh, that he retired. That's right. He did say that he, he retired because he's got, you know, deal with his uh, his condition. Um, I can't see him doing another movie. Yeah, he's pretty far along in the disease. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Did say he's keeping the right silly? Die is very happy with it, just the three. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. We don't know what it is. You, uh, but it gets everybody talking, doesn't it? <laughs> like, I don't know what the plan is. I don't know what you guys plan on doing. Maybe just post a nice little picture. And that's it. And that's all it is. <laughs> uh, both him and Bruce Willis. So is that, a, oh God, Bruce Willis is another one too. Could be a 4K re-release. Okay, a 4K re-release would be pretty fucking sick. Was it not already in 4K? Can you not get in 4K anywhere? The fuck. A 4K would be amazing, though. Mm. Anyways, anyways, we gotta wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, chat. My chat, thank you so much for hanging out. Woo, 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 woo. No. Yes. Yes. You guys stick around. We'll come back in a second. But hey, time to watch the movies again. I know, huh? I think Declan hasn't watched the third one. We watched the first one. Anyways. Anyways. Thank you again, everybody. This is the news. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Find me, Mike B, a.k.a. Mike B. On all the things on Mastodon. I'll put the link in the thing down there. Because I don't know what it's like. It's like a a a a Mike B at Mastodon.social or something like that. So, yeah. Buy a random new platform my old ass doesn't understand yet. Yeah. Well, yep. There with you. <gasps>